Hail and Mercies, welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. It's me, the Spark King, and in today's video I will show you super cool build for Shadowheart. Yeah, this lady is everybody's favorite, and I got nice build for her to rock through Hunter mod easily. I used it on my good guy playthrough and recommend to everyone who want to have a fun with really powerful cleric in a party. Shadowheart is cleric. And when you're playing cleric, most of the time you want as much cleric levels as possible. And actually, in the early game I recommend starting as cleric and getting cleric levels. But on level 6 you want to respect your character and change your starting class. Instead of going cleric, we starting with fighter. That's really important. By picking fighter we get in constitution saving throw proficiency. And now we can use concentration spells without breaking concentration too much. So, fighting style, defense, ability point distribution, wisdom and constitution are our main important stats. So, we're getting wisdom to 16 and constitution to 16. Other stats is not too important, but sometimes you want to hit enemies with your maze. That's why getting something like 12 or even 14 in strength is a nice idea. Dexterity won't affect our armor class when we're using heavy armor. And that's one more reason why we're picking fighter, because fighter getting heavy armor proficiency from the first level when you're picking him. But dexterity affects our initiative, and we don't want to act last most of the time, so getting 12 dexterity is a nice idea. Cleric created, let's get first levels. Instantly we're switching from fighter into cleric, and Shadowheart is trickery domain cleric. We don't want it, we want like really stable, powerful clerics that we can rely on. That's why we're going with light domain cleric. In my opinion, most powerful supportive clerics that can do insane amount of damage at the same time. Just by leveling you will gain access to a lot of cool light spells that will use fire damage. First level, burning hands. 3 to 6 fire damage in melee range. Really insane. Fairy fire is nice too. You can use it to break invisibility of your enemies and give advantage on attack rolls against them to your party. But most importantly, we get in Warding Flare. You can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on attacker, even when they are attacking your allies. And coolest part, you will see what enemy roll. So if enemy rolling critical hit, just use this the future and they probably will miss or just not make critical hit. Really powerful stuff. For our early game cleric spells, I would go with my favorite. Long range spell, Guiding Bolt, melee range spell, Inflict Wounds, and it's Radiant and Necrotic Damage. So we get two damage types, depending on what enemies we're fighting, we can pick the right spell to cast. Most important stuff, Healing Ward, your most usable spell as Cleric on all levels. You're using only bonus action, and by using the spell you can help your teammates get up, so you don't need to come and use action to pick them up. Just heal them a little bit and they're healed. Another useful stuff is Bless, just to give additional 1d4 to the cross of your allies. Or Shield of Faith, 2 armor class in early game is really nice ability to have. It uses concentration, but there's nothing more to concentrate on. So let's now rush through levels of Cleric basically. Level 3, we're getting our another bread and butter channel divinity spell, Radiance of Dawn, 2d10 radiant damage in a radius. You will cast it every fight, that's crazy how effective this spell is. While you get an additional spell slots every level, I won't stop on them too much. So just pick whatever you like, this is like most important spells, we already taken them. Third level, we're getting Scorching Ray, best fire spell possible. And access to a lot of level 2 spells from Cleric. From level 2 I would go instantly with 8 and hold person. A lot of players like spiritual weapon. I don't like it. It uses bonus section, it creates additional body in a fight. This body can attack with force damage, least resistant damage in a game. But in my experience, it's pretty slow, so in most cases it's not usable. I just prefer to have hold person just in case. Level 5 we get in cantrip, produce flame, in case you need some flame, and we get in feet. It will be ability improvement wisdom to increase chances of our spells to hit and basically that's it. 
level 5, that's uh, where we're unlocking our most favorite spells. That's why we're going to level 5 first, and then we're switching to Fighter. We want to unlock Spirit Guardians. From this point of the game, you will never use another spell. So now just pick every spell that requires no concentration. I would go with Mouth Healing Ward, in case you need to heal all your allies, and Revify, in case you need to revive them, if you failed to heal them. Sometimes it happens in Honor mod. Another useful spell for next levels is Remove Curse, you will need it occasionally in this game, and Animate Dead, just in case you need a reliable body in a fight that can tank some damage. Level 7, nothing special, just improved Warding Flare. Level 8, that's where we're getting level 7 Cleric, we're getting access to level 4 spells, and honestly we don't need any of those. But if you want some, I would suggest picking Dash Ward. That's nice buff, sometime you need it. Level 8, that's where your cantrips become stronger, you're adding your Wisdom modifier to damage of cantrips. But most importantly, we're getting fit over here. While it's a smart idea to get uh, 20 in Wisdom, I would suggest going into Warcaster fit instead. It will give you advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration. So now not only you're getting this constitution saving throw proficiency from fighter level 1, you're rolling two dice instead of one, and now it's just impossible to break your concentration. And you will gain nice reactions that will use your shocking grasp at moving targets that's trying to run away from you, and targets will try to run away from you a lot. Level 9 Cleric, we're getting level 5 spells, and now we just don't need any of those. We're just leveling up. Level 10, we're getting Divine Intervention. That's really powerful level, and you want to get your Divine Intervention at exactly level 10. So I recommend to respect at level 10, get Divine Intervention, and then respect again. Or just wait until level 11. You can use this once, and you will use it to gain weapon. And we're finishing at level 12 with level 11 Cleric that unlocks level 6 spells. So what we want to pick here? Here you want to pick Planner Lie and Hero's Feast, two level 6 spells. Most of the time no one picks two spells from level 6, because you don't have a lot of spell slots. But I will show you how to buff your wool party and make it unbeatable. So from Light Domain you will get variety of fire spells. I won't show them here right now. I guess you know how they work. Fireball looks like a pool of fire that's doing 86 fire damage. Just in case you need fire damage, you can use the spells. Most of them don't require any concentration, like Flame Strike, for example, it's doing fire and radiant damage, Fireball, Scorching Ray, so I'm just removing them from my hotbar. Lyrics get this turn undead future that can make all undeads run away from you, but again, it doesn't matter too much for our build. That's actually all we need to play this cleric. But to understand how it works, let me show you final end game build. There's a lot of synergy in it, so that's why every item is pretty important. Helm of Baldurin. You're getting bonus to armor class and saving throws to keep your concentration, and every turn you're being healed by two hit points. For cloak slot, I will go with Vivacious Cloak. You're gaining temporary hit points when you're casting spells while in melee. It's very nice for your survivability. Now for armor slot. There's two armors that I recommend. In early game from Act 2 you can get this Dwarven Splint Mail, really powerful stuff. It's heavy armor with 19 armor class and plus 2 to constitution. Constitution affects our concentration, so no brainer. And additionally we'll have more hit points. But in the late end game I would suggest armor of persistence. All incoming damage is reduced by 2. And additionally, you gain in resistance and blade ward. Resistance adding plus 1d4 to your saving throws, again to keep your concentration, and blade ward, you get in resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage to all basic damage types, non magical damage types. And this will half all damage you take. Super powerful end game armor. For our glove slot, it will be reviving hands. When you heal creature, it gains effect of blade ward. So same effect, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing and slashing damage. And if you revive creature, it gains effect of dash ward. So next time someone kills this entity, it will be revived automatically to one hit point. And you will gain a free revivify spell, basically, once per long rest. 
So in case someone of your party dies, you cast this spell. It uses no spell slot and it will automatically cast level 4 spell on your light. Very powerful stuff. For boot slot, it doesn't matter too much. I like uh, something like Disintegrating Night Walkers that gives you Misty Step. Nice for mobility, for like low mobility cleric. For bow slot, uh, just use any bow that give you maybe advantage to your initiative. There is one bow that gives plus one initiative in early game and this is Act 3 bow with plus three, plus three to initiative. Again, you don't want to act last in most battles. But bow slot is not so important as your generally. Amulet of Devote, very powerful amulet, gives plus two to spell save DC. It will be harder for enemies to resist your spells and save from your spells. And you can use additional Channel Divinity Charge. Channel Divinity is your Radiance of Dawn spell. So it will be 2d10 plus 12 Radiant damage. In a really large radius, as you can see. Crazily large radius. Another amulet that you want for this build is Spell Crux Amulet. This will give you restoration of any chosen spell slot. For second ring slot, in early game, just pick any saving ring, like Ring of Mind Shielding, just to have advantage to not being charmed, slipped, or other bad conditions. But in the end game, you want Ring of Regeneration. Again, at the beginning of your turn, it will heal you for 1 to 4 hit points. You can get it early in Act 3 and it will help you doing the same job as Helm of Baldron, because it's super late game helmet. It will heal you every turn, basically. <laughs> and a ring that you can get from the like first minutes of the game, Whispering Promise. When you heal creature, it gains 1d4 bonus to attack rolls. Basically, it's getting bless. And saving throws for two turns. So, again, it's getting bless for free when someone is healed. And with this combination, as you can see, you're being healed every turn. So you're getting this additional 1d4 to saving throws each turn. Now our weapon and shield. So for shield, I like uh, Svaris Sledboard. It's giving you a force conduit each turn, which will block some damage. And for our weapon, it will, of course, Blood of Latander, super powerful cleric mace. Once per long rest, when you die, you're regaining hit points instead and hitting all your allies around. So again, really powerful. If someone focusing you, it's plus three enchantment. It's easier to hit even when you got really low strength. So really nice weapon and it getting Sunbeam level six spell. So really powerful stuff. But when you don't need this uh, Sunbeam and other effects from your mace, switch to Devotee's Mace. That's mace you're getting from your devotion from level 10 Cleric Special Ability. And this weapon will wrap up our build to make it crazily broken. So how you want to play in the end game of this Cleric? You start with Planner Ally. My favorite is Genie, he helps so much in the end game, so feel free to summon him. Now you don't have any level 6 spell slots, but you just switch into Spellcrux Amulet using spell slot restoration and restore level 6 spell slot. Now you can get back to your Amulet of Devote, for example, and cast Hero's Feast. It will increase your party health points and give you additional feast supplies, so you don't need to find them or to buy them, just getting this for free, for level 6 spell slot actually. Then cast 8 level 5, and just look at health points of your party. Even on Honor mod, <laughs> you will be stronger than bosses. Your genie will have almost 200, other party members will be 150, weak party members will be 120. It's really nice and powerful health pool. There is actually a way how you can cast all these spells and keep all your spell slots. More on that later. Most of the time your party members will start a fight. But thanks to our build, we will still have really high initiative and most of the time act in the first turns in combat. And that's where broken part of this build starts. From the start, we already get in this blast on us from the ring. And of course, we will get blade ward and resistance. So it's really hard to hit us. But on first turn, we want to use bonus action to cast healing incense aura. This will heal 1d4 to all nearby teammates and make sure to stay nearby on the first turn. Depending on where your enemies is located, you can try one of the two things. You can be like full support and get your concentration on something like Hold Person or Fairy Fire. It's already pretty hard to 
resist your whole person, and it's only level 2 spell slot. When you succeed, every ally attack will be critical hit for really big damage numbers. And when someone attacks your teammates, you will be offered to use improved warding flare to make enemy attack with disadvantage. Use it especially if they are rolling for critical hit, and you can hover your mouse to see exact rolls, so if they need 16 to hit, they get in 10 bonus, really high bonus, so maybe it's not worth to react when it's not critical hit. Do not react. But when enemies don't have really high bonuses, you can always use it to improve disadvantage on the attack and probably they will miss, so that's a nice idea to do. And now broken stuff. So, from the second turn and so on, every turn you will heal your allies. This means you will give Blade Ward, resistant to all physical damage type to your allies, and Bless, additional 1d4 to attack rolls and saving throws. Each turn for two turns, so basically for full fight while you staying somewhat close. In case you want it earlier, just use Mass Healing Ward from level 3 spell, and instead of using Hold Person from first turn, I recommend using Spirit Guardians. That's only level 3 spell, and you can choose one of the two versions. Radiant or Necrotic Damage. Make sure to press Examine on your enemies and see, do they have Necrotic or Radiant Resistance? No, they don't, so we can use the Spirit Guardians, but now we can upcast them. Up to level 6. We don't have level 6 spell slots, so upcasting to level 5, and we're doing 5d8 every time we're attacking someone with this spell. So this is basically Guardians, they stay nearby, doing some damage, and how to use them is really easy. Now enemies already grouped up, especially on second turn. Now we can use Misty Step if you got same build and same items as me, and just teleport to inflict damage on them. They already getting damaged. And now we just <laughs> run around in the circles nearby of enemies, doing this damage to everyone basically here. Try to stay close to your enemies, because so when they will try to run away, they will probably provoke opportunity attack. And you can use your shocking grasp. With Genie, just use shifting sense, it's same as Misty Step. And your main idea with your summon to group enemies, so just position yourself and use Thunder Wave to pull enemies closer to your cleric. And of course do some damage at the same time. And then comes coolest part, if enemies still surviving. When Spirit Guardians active, you can use your bonus action to heal your teammates, yourself, give Blade Ward, Bless and other stuff with bonus action just in case you need, but coolest part, now you can do damage with Spirit Guardians just by running around. Just come close to your enemies and this will damage them. As you can see, everyone is damaged. To save movement speed, I recommend using jump with bonus action, in case you don't need this bonus action for other stuff. And as you can see, it's really hard to hit you. Everyone just missed. Yeah, we got 24 IC, it's really hard to hit us. And basically just jump to next enemies and do even more damage. And after the damage to a lot of enemies, make sure to finish your turn somewhere where you can hit a lot of them. And just use your Channel Divinity Radiance of Dawn for additional 2d10 plus 12 damage. Basically every turn we're doing to all nearby enemies 5d8 and 2d10 plus 12 damage. That's insane amount of damage for supportive class, while keeping our HP as high as possible, giving Bless Blade War to our teammates, having really high health points. That's really insane and super powerful cleric. I hope you enjoyed this build and it will help you beat Honor mod easily. See you in the next videos, guys.